Tito and his, uh, his, I think it was his, uh, his wife, were, uh, they were hit by a bus. Right? I think he was on like a moped or some shit yep. like that. His, I thought that his was wife Frank. Was uh, no, Combined different, the yeah, that happens, man. There's only so much data sure. holding your brain. After yeah. a while, those, those stories get a little squirrely. Yeah. You know, Frank was hit, I think, like right in Vegas. And uh, some guy just fucking ran a red light, slammed right into him. Broke his, bed, uh, broke his thigh, sent him flying through the air. And it took a long time for him to come back. You know, he's a, a really impressive case of a comeback. Yeah. You know, he's gone. Well, because it didn't go real smooth. It didn't go smooth at all. You look at, like, the Brandon Vera fight, the Pedipano fight. You know, it's like, wow. Like, where, what happened to the, you know, the, the former champ? Right. right. You know, what happened to the dynamic Frank Mir that, that burst onto the scene, you know? The, the one that beat Pete Williams with that crazy yeah. arm bar from yeah. the guard. I remember. You know, Frank Mir was a beast. And so that, that set him back. That was a, a pretty, pretty grueling injury. Yeah, he's one of my favorite guys. I really like him. Very smart I, yeah, guy. I enjoy Frank a lot. His, his wife's real nice. You know, he's a local Vegas guy. He's a great commentator. Too. Second Amendment guy. He's very good very, commentator. Very he much. He commentates a better than the interviews that he cuts. You know, sometimes <laughs> sometimes he does an interview and, and people are are turned off by him. They think he's putting out an attitude. I don't see right. it, but I, you know, I read and hear about these things. But he doesn't do any of. The, he's totally different persona when he's commentating, and I like that. Yeah. You know, if he doesn't, if he doesn't see it, he doesn't say it. He's pretty fair. He's a smart dude. He's a very smart dude. He's a Kindle with him all the time. He's kind of, guys constantly. Reading. I've had some really heavy conversations with that man, and you know that's why he's uh, so good at jujitsu. He's got so much technique too, because he's like, you know, he's like an encyclopedia for shit. The fact that he caught Nogueira in that Kimura and broke his arm. Yeah. The jujitsu world just exploded. When that happened, that yeah. Frank Mir, not only did it, he did it when Noguera instigated the ground game because he had Frank Mir hurt and he wanted to finish him off. And that just shows you what a bad motherfucker Frank Mir is. That's crazy that he bested Noguera on the ground and finished while, him. While dizzy. While yeah. dizzy. I mean, that's, if that guy's not underrated, damn. Yeah. Yeah, that's really fucking impressive. Oh, he's got his positions for sure. And I was cheering for Frank in that fight. I was happy to see him win, you know, as a fan. But I took no pleasure in seeing Noguera injured at Not all. like that. That was, a, that was a rough one. That yeah. was a really hard one to watch. But Noguera's back. Somebody told me Noguera's booked for a card coming up. Booked for a card coming up against Czech Congo. Yeah, against Czech yeah. Congo. So he shook it off. You know, good for <laughs> Noguera. I don't know how, wow, that's amazing, isn't it? I mean, how, how the fuck did, I don't know what they did. I don't know if they used, used plates or what. I don't know how they put it back together, man. Yeah, that was yeah. fast, but good for them. And Mira, he's going to go fight for the world title against Dos Santos, who I will never underestimate again. I under, I thought Dos Santos was dead in the water with Velasquez. I thought it was a waste of a fight. I couldn't believe, I, I will never underestimate Dos Santos again. He can throw heat, man. He can throw heat, you know, and I was really looking forward to him against Alistair. Alistair and him with a very interesting fight, man. You know, because Alistair is such a pure stand-up guy. And Alistair is so good at incorporating leg kicks and knees. And, you know, he's got a real tight guard, especially now that he's so big. You know, he, he kind of, like, sure. punches everything over, protects himself yeah. well. He's a dangerous guy to anybody that has to, that has to in, you know, enforce a stand-up strategy. If you want to just go and box with that guy, he's got so many other tools other than just boxing. You know? Right. And he's so technical with his attacks. It's just, uh, it sucks that he, uh, you know, what, whatever his issue was, I uh, was saying, I think that uh, he got some medication that, you know, some doctor gave him that had testosterone and he didn't realize it, something yeah. along those lines. Well, that was interesting. Uh, the whole case was interesting. And yeah, you know, let's jump off that topic as quick as we can. But, you know, one thing about that, he took a substance test. He took yeah. four. Two of yeah. them were surprise tests. No substance was ever found. And he came forward later and kind of volunteered, hey, it looks like I might have taken some testosterone. But that wasn't what the test showed. The test didn't show anything. It just said, hey, there's something with your TD ratio. Let's try to figure out why this happened. And the media well, what really could got cause that wrong. That? Well, you, here's what you got to understand, Joe. So and I'm really glad you asked this. Here's your T and E. Okay, here's okay, your T and so here's your E. So they're very close. For, for epi folks at home, epi testosterone. And they're very close. You know, they're usually even or one to one. Some allow commissions allow four to one or even a six to one difference. But the reality is most are one to one. Now, if your testosterone went up, or if it went down, that gap is your ratio. With the same set, if you're epi accurate about something, it's not disrespectful. It's just it's just uncomfortable. Yeah. It, it might be uncomfortable for you, but to label it disrespectful, you're n you're not seeing what I'm saying. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with you as a human. I'm saying you know when you you, you know you might do a technique wrong. You might do, sure. you might have an opening. You might it's not a disrespectful thing, but to, you know to a lot of fighters like. 
it's uh, your entire identity is wrapped yeah. up in, in what you do. But, but you owe that to the viewer. That's who's paying to hear you, not the fighter. You know, yeah. I, I can tell you, I thought I beat Michael Bisping. I thought it was pretty clear. It's very close. You, you had a different opinion. And I never sent you a text or was upset with it. You, you, you have your opinion, and when you're on the mic, it's your job to share that opinion. You know, um, my opinion, but I should clarify that, my opinion actually changed when I watched it again. When I watched it again, I, uh, I thought your takedowns would have won it. Yeah, I appreciate it. You know, I had it the same yeah. way, and I'm pretty objective. I'm not afraid to go look yeah, at it. I pulled one out. I it's hard, though, that. when you're watching it live. You know, quite honestly, I, I honestly get a better view of fights a lot of times from watching it at home. The experience of watching on pay-per-view is fucking great. I mean, they always get to the right angle immediately. It's never like, you know, sometimes I'll look up and, you know, uh, Herb Dean's right in front of me. I can't see what's going on or someone's in a post. Sure. I don't I don't know what's going on in the box. Like when uh, Alan Belcher and Husamar Paul Harris went oh, at it. The, when it, when they first went to the ground, I didn't know that Belcher... It, it, he instigated that position from the shot. You know, he's the one who pulled him into the into that position, and I didn't realize it. I thought that Paul Harris was diving on him because I couldn't quite see what was going on. So you do sometimes get a better view yeah. of a fight from watching it at home. Yeah, you know, sometimes you get hyped up in the moment too. It's, it's hard to. And off topic, but speaking of Belcher, you know, Dana gives a fight of the night, fight er of the night easily was Alan Belcher. Yeah. You know, Paul Harris is. Scary. He's flat out scary. Nobody wants to fight him because if it doesn't go well, you're going to sit out for six to eight months. It's going to rip your legs. Yeah, it can go really, really bad. For the folks who don't know anything about uh, the UFC or jiu-jitsu and you're just listening to this podcast, Paul Harris is uh, one of the weirdest uh, like specialists in all of the UFC because all he, his number one thing is ripping guys' knees apart. It's terrifying. Weird build, weird technique. Huge Hulk-looking dude. Yeah, short. Five eight and just built like a brick shit house and just dives on your leg and Very rips unique. it apart. Yeah, H- horrific. The way he wins, people are screaming in agony. Yeah, and you know, Alan went. God, Alan did a great job. I was, Amazing. I, I was happy for him. Don't I like to see the fire. Pell Horace win too because you know his backstory, everything yeah. he's overcome. He's yeah. a great story too. But well, I'm uh, a huge fan of technique. Paul Harris's technique, it's not just his physical strength, his technique is masterful. The way he-